Uh, good morning. Welcome to today's meeting on October 19th, 2023. The Washington State Gambling Commission meeting is in person as well as virtually at the Washington State Liquor and Cannabis, Cannabis Board at 9.33 a.m. If you have any questions regarding the meeting, please contact Julie Anderson at julie.anderson at wsgc.wa.gov. Um, comments about the meeting were able to be submitted by email on our website until this morning, up until the start this morning. Um, Julie Anderson is out today, so I think, um, Director Griffin, were there any comments? Or Damon? Julie, have your hand raised? I did, yes. We had one comment by Nancy Watson. <clears throat> okay, do you wanna put that into the record? So I'll, I'll just, so, I'll, thank you. <laughs> so this is Tina Griffin, um, uh, director. So yes, we did receive a comment this morning from Ms. Watson and I'll summarize that during public comment and, uh, but the document has been emailed out to all of the commissioners. And uh, so uh, if, if we can just touch back on that and I'll do a summary at that time, thank you. There were no other public comments and I believe the chat is turned off. So all public comments uh, moving forward will either come during the um, time at which you ask or at the end, thank you. Thank you. Um, telephone lines are currently muted. When I ask for public comment, uh, raise your hand and staff will unmute your line. You can provide your comment and then re-mute your phone. Um, when you provide your comment, please clearly state your name, your contact information if you'd like to receive a summary of all comments and who you are representing. Today's meeting uh, will be recorded because we are holding this meeting virtually as well as in person. I'll call the rule of the commission members to ensure a quorum. Um, Vice Chair Patterson, I believe she's excused today. Uh, Commissioner Sizemore. I see you there. Okay, I'm Commissioner here. Lawson. <laughs> I'm here. There. Commissioner Gibson. Here. All right. Um, Senator Conway as an ex officio. Are you with us this morning? I believe he was going to be late. Uh, Senator Holy. No. Representative Clova. Good morning. Good morning. And Representative Rude. I believe he was also going to be late this morning. All right. Um, so we will start this morning with the consent agenda from September 14th, 2023. Um, I believe there's one change to the meeting minutes that um, Commissioner Sizemore was excused from that meeting. Um, so we can go ahead and make that change. And then um, for the April meeting in April 2024 is current, currently scheduled for what was the date? I can't remember. Was it the 18th? 18 to 19, or yeah. Okay, and I'm going to be gone that meeting. Um, is anyone else? I think I heard that someone else I'm, was maybe going to be. I'm, I'm also uh, available that meeting, those dates, I should say. Okay, the 18th and 19th, yes. So I think we can either move the meeting to the 4th and 5th, or potentially the 25th and 26th is so we can ensure a quorum. Does anyone have any of those dates available and available? I have a conflict on the 4th and 5th. Okay. Does the 24th and 25th work? Is that, or 25th and 26th? I mean, I'm sorry. Does that work, Tina, also for Director Griffin? I believe so. We can we can make it work. Yes. Twenty five and twenty six are open for me. Okay. 
uh, might be a bit of a child care challenge. I'll, I'll have to um, talk to my co-parent about that. Okay. Let's plan for that for now, I think. Um, so I guess if we can get a motion that includes the Commissioner Sizemore being excused and the change to that meeting, that would be fantastic. And the approval of the items in the consent agenda. Also so much. Second. All right. Is there any public com or any comment on any of that? Okay. Um, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. Motion passes. Um, do we have the director's reports? Uh, no director's report this month. Um, Chair. Okay. Then we have um, the second agenda item is a request for a raffle prize exceeding 40,000. A uh, presentation by the Spokane Guild School and Neuromuscular Center, um, the doing business as a Joyal, Joya Child and Family Development. Um, we have Raul Munez, sorry if I said that wrong. Um, <laughs> and the um, executive director and foundation trustee. Is everyone available? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Yes, hi. Uh, good morning, commissioners and ex officials. Uh, my name is Raul Munoz. I'm a special agent in the regulation unit out of the Spokane office. I'm here today to introduce the Spokane Guild School and Neuromuscular Center uh, doing business as a joy of child development, uh, which is seeking the commissioner's approval, uh, commissioner's approval to, to exceed the value of $40,000 uh, raffle prize. Uh, Joya would like to raffle off a 2023 Toyota 4Runner vehicle, which is valued at $52,733 for this current license year, which expires uh, September 30 of 2024. Uh, the WAC rules require licensees to get your approval prior to offering the raffle price, which exceeds $40,000. Uh, to seek that approval, the licensee must submit a raffle plan, which uh, Joya Child Development did, and which was reviewed by staff uh, and is included in your packet. Uh, based on the plan, uh, staff recommend uh, you approve Joy Child Development request to exceed the annual raffle price of $40,000. Uh, with that, I would like to introduce uh, Corinne Michelli, uh, who's the development director for uh, child development. Good morning. Thank you guys so much for having us. We really appreciate the commission um, for allowing us this time and the opportunity to share with you a little bit about Joya and consider our request. Um, so as Raul mentioned, my name is Corinne Michelli. I'm the development director here at Joya. Um, if you'd go to the next slide, please. Um, many of you may know of us as the Spokane Guild School and Neuromuscular Center. Um, we went through a rebranding in 2017 and now are known in our community as Joya Child and Family Development. Um, Joya is a pediatric therapy provider offering physical, occupational, and speech therapies, as well as special education services um, to more than 500 children in Spokane County. Next slide. If you keep just hitting, there's some timing things, I think. Thank you. Um, Joya's mission, we are dedicated to igniting hope, empowering children and families, and establishing lifelong skills. We provide exceptional pediatric therapy and support services, engage families, and remove financial barriers. Our community is built on inclusion, encouragement, and lasting connections. Joya is one of the only pediatric therapy clinics in our region that provides these services to families at no cost, um, ensuring that the parents can focus on the care their child needs, not what they can afford. 
To ensure this care is available for all families, um, Joya must raise 1.5 million each year to cover this uncompensated care. We do this through various fundraising events, donor appeals, individual gifts, and support from foundations and corporations. And this is where the car raffle can help Joya the most. Next slide. Um, we envision our board members, foundation trustees, staff, current and alumni parents, as well as some of our high school advisory board members to come together and help us sell 10,000 tickets at $10 each with an end goal of raising $100,000 to support the therapy and services our kiddos need to thrive. Next slide. And I think the best way for you guys to really truly understand the work that we do is to hear from a family themselves. So I'd love for David Short, he's a current foundation trustee as well as an alumni parent to just briefly share how we've helped his family. Good morning, my name is David Short. I'm the general manager for Penley Toyota. Um, you see my family, my wife, uh, our oldest son Hawk, and then my youngest son who attended the Guild School. Uh, his name is Colby. And so part of our story is just uh, kind of what we went through and then what Joya does for all families, including mine. And so uh, my son was born and um, we had nowhere to go and we had the opportunity to come to Joya when he was six months old. And he was born uh, with a disease called torticollis. And so um, low muscle tone and uh, issues moving and things of that nature. And so through the course of his first two years of life, um, we attended Joya, and as you can see here today, that's a cross-country photo from last Friday, um, and you can see him on the little paddle board there. You would have no idea that he had so much against him when he started, and it's all because of what the Guild School of Joya provided for our families, and they do this over and over again. And so our thought was, how can we help? Um, what can we do at a dealership level? And this is where we came up with the car raffle. And so. Our request and our ask is help us so we can help the families in our community. You guys, appreciate you considering our request. Are there any questions? Uh, well, thank you so much for that. Um, that was just a delight to see Colby now being able to do things <laughs> um, that he couldn't have done before. Um, are there any questions for anybody of my commissioners? No. All right. Is there any um, public comments? Not seeing any hands. Um, all right. Uh, do we have a motion? I would move, <clears throat> excuse me, that we uh, approve this request to exceed a prize of $40,000. I'll second Commissioner that. Lawson, I'll second. You got to it first, right. sir. It's been moved and uh, seconded. Do we have any further discussion? See anything? All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All right, the motion passes. Thank you. Um, next up, we have a request to initiate rulemaking with uh, Lisa McLean. Is Lisa here? Good morning. Sorry, I'm coming in on my phone. As I my my laptop is being used to. Um, project to the public in our room here. So <laughs> good morning, commissioners, ex officios. Um, we are here uh, to present, I'm here to present uh, a staff proposed uh, rulemaking. Um, we, staff recommends initiating rulemaking to further clarify the limited conditions permitting non-house bank card rooms, class F and house bank card rooms to uh, be adjacent to each other. What's in your packet is the current WAC that governs this. This is 23006046. And we haven't yet determined if we're going to uh, amend this one or if we're going to introduce a new rule. But in any case, we think that it needs to be the further clarifications, and that's what we're uh, suggesting. Okay, thank you. Um, any commissioners have any questions? 
No, is there any um, public comments? Yes, we do have a public comment in the room. Um, so as we're setting this up, we we are live at the Washington, Washington Liquor Cannabis Board, and um, we do have a speaker here. Thank you. Okay. Uh, hi. I guess you're here. I'm Justin Beltram. I'm the CEO of Maverick Gaming. Um, first, I want to thank Tina and her staff. Um, they've been great to work with recently with all the stuff we've had with them. Um, but I guess the question is why, after a couple of decades of having adjacent card rooms, why is this coming up? Like, why is this on the agenda? Second. So the reason for this change, it has been uh, something that has been on the books in some capacity since um, 2010. The reason for moving forward with this particular change is that we think there can be more clear and transparent language surrounding this to make sure that there really needs to be two established food and beverage businesses that are adjacent to each other. and. Uh, for the most part, it just outlines currently, the rule just outlines currently the things not to have. And so I think that we can do better by making it clear and transparent what those requirements are moving forward so that it's easy for applicants as they're con contemplating um, having two adjacent rooms together, what those requirements will be. Okay, thank you. There any additional public comment? I don't see any hands. All right. Um, do we have a motion? I can do that. <clears throat> I would move that we initiate rulemaking as proposed by staff. I'll second. All right. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. Motion passes. Um, all right. Do we have any public comments? This brings us to the end of our meeting. So public comments over anything that we've done. Roxanne. You can go ahead, Roxanne. Thank you. Um, so uh, for the record, I am Roxanne Waldron. I'm the State Problem Gambling Program Manager at the Healthcare Authority in the Division of Behavioral Health and Recovery. So I wanna thank you, Chair Levy and commissioners for giving me a chance to do a couple of quick announcements. Um, the first one is that in, um, as you may recall in the bill ESS, B, 5634, I'm sure you can just pull that right out of your memory. Uh, this was the bill that established um, an advisory committee as well as increasing the funding to the program. And this new problem gambling advisory work group is having its first meeting in um, mid-November. It's gonna be a quarterly ongoing work group. And it's gonna be responsible to track the progress of the recommendations in the problem gambling task force's final report that went to the legislature in December of 2022. So most of the required positions are already filled, but I am seeking a couple of members. Um, I am seeking a member from the commercial gambling uh, side to join. And um, I also want to invite any commissioners or ex officios who would like to participate to please contact me. I don't know if I'll be able to enter my information into the chat, but if someone has my email there at the commission and could do that, I would appreciate it. And then I also have some exciting news to share that we've talked about for a long time. HCA received confirmation last week from the Centers for Medicaid and Medicare Services that they have approved Washington State to cover problem gambling assessment and treatment under Apple Health, which is Medicaid, starting January 1st, 2024. 
So that's very exciting. Yeah, uh, funding has already been allocated by the legislature last spring for this biennium. So HCA is now working on this implementation, which will roll out over the next three to six months. And I'll give an update on this in March when I return. I most likely will hopefully be invited to return to give an update on Problem Gambling Awareness Month. So on behalf of the Healthcare Authority and myself, I want to thank um, specifically Senator Conway, Representative Kloba, Commissioner Patterson, and also Director Griffin, the Commission staff, and everyone who advocated on behalf of um, improving problem gambling services in our state. So I thank you. All right, well, thank you. That is good news. It's always good to be here on a Thursday morning. All right, Director Griffin. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. So uh, to just read into the, uh, just to summarize for the record, the um, public comment that was received this morning was from Nancy Watson, um, and there were a few attachments, but I'll just summarize the um, information. Again, this has been forwarded off to all of the commissioners, and uh, I believe the ex officios, uh, yes, were included in her um, email as well. And if the public would like any of this information, we can make it a Available and we can also put it in the packet for. And if you would like, Chair. But in summary, um, there were two recommendations that were shared stemming from the National Council on Problem Gambling's annual conference that Ms. Watson attended in July of 2023. The recommendations um, are for federal legislative initiatives um, and uh, she does state that every state can lend their support by making sure that anyone, not just a select few, who profits from gambling contributes to the statewide problem gambling fund managed by the Department of Health. So, again, um, that is a summary of what was provided. Great. Thank you. Any additional public comment from anybody? Okay. So, our... Next meeting will be November 16th and 17th, um, I believe at the Liquor and Cannabis Board. Um, and hopefully we will be there in person again. I think this was a flashback to 2020, none of us wanted. <laughs> but in the event, this concludes our meeting today at 9.55 a.m. So thank you all for joining and we will see you next month.